Right, we're going to take a close look at how uh, fatty acids are transported. That means uh, they're, how they're transported from the stomach or the gut. And not, not necessarily the stomach because they're, the stomach as an organ doesn't absorb fat, but the intestines do. So the gut, um, how they're transported to and from the liver, and how they're transported to and from adipocytes. So adipocytes being fat cells. So the first thing, as you can see in this figure, pretty self-explanatory, uh, triglycerides are acted on by lipases. We're going to take a, a closer look at lipases in a little bit, uh, probably in another video. Uh, those are broken down into usually two fatty acids and one monoacylglycerol, which is absorbed into the intestinal lumen, uh, that are not in the lumen, but into the intestinal cells, which are recombined with uh, into triacylglycerols, then other lipids and proteins are combined with that to form a chylomicron. So chylomicrons, of course you can see down here, it's cholesterol, triglycerides, phospholipids, and apolipoproteins. The key thing is uh, these chylomicrons are typically transported in the lymph system, not in the, uh, not in the blood. So various lipoproteins uh, are used to transport cholesterol and fatty acids. You can see uh, up here that there's there's going to be a trend. So we got chylomicrons, VLDL, uh, IDL, LDL, and HDL. And these are uh, very low density lipoproteins, low density lipoproteins, high density lipoproteins. And the the trend here is if you look at the density, the density is increasing across the chart. And then the particle mass is decreasing across the chart. The percent of protein involved increases across the chart. So more protein, higher density. And the percent of triglycerides decreases. So HDL has a lot of protein, low amount of triglyceride. LDL has uh, a lesser amount of protein and more amount of triglycerides and so on. Now starting with absorption in the intestine, we get chylomicrons, and those get transported to the liver. And then from the liver, you get, uh, y usually on LDL, you get transport to um, other peripheral tissues or to uh, adipocytes. Adipocytes can free up fat, can send out free fatty acids that are usually associated with albumin as they travel back to the liver. And then if you go from peripheral tissues to the liver, it's usually associated with HDL. So LDL takes away from the liver, HDL takes things back to the liver. And then finally, bile salts will take um, fatty acids and dump them into the intestines. And, it, and those bile salts are then used to reabsorb new fatty acids from the intestines. Now keep in mind that the bile salts that go into the intestines, they don't go directly back to the liver. They help to absorb fatty acids into the intestinal cells in the intestinal ep uh, epithelia, and from there they get converted to chylomicrons to go back to the liver. So palmitic acid or palmitate is the primary uh, fatty acid produced by the liver, and it's also the primary uh, acyl group that's on a triglyceride. Whenever a triglyceride is uh, stored in adipose tissue, or fats are stored in adipose tissue as, as triglycerides, and uh, to release those, you, lipases will cleave the, uh, uh, the ester bonds. Upon cleaving one bond, you would be left with a diacylglycerol, uh, cleaving two bonds, you would get a monoacylglycerol. If you cleave all three bonds, you'd be left with a glycerol and three fatty acids. Now, triacylglycerols or uh, triglycerides, they're stored as droplets. There's a whole bunch of them grouped together, stored as droplets. They're surrounded by a protein called perilipin. This protein gives the lipid droplet some structural stability as well as protects it from interaction with other cytosolic compounds such as lipases. When you have glucagon or epinephrine signaling, it activates adenylcyclase, which activates protein kinase A, 
which creates an active lipase, uh, an active lipase. The other thing that protein kinase A will do is it'll phosphorylate perilipin. Whenever the perilipin gets phosphorylated, these uh, lipases can interact with the phosphorylated perilipin and kind of reach in and start cleaving the triglycerides. And so these free fatty acids then can move into the serum and attach to albumin. When they attach to albumin, they can be transported to the liver or to other peripheral tissues. Now this doesn't just happen willy-nilly. It's very controlled because once you cleave these uh, triglycerides, it takes a lot of ATP to reattach them to a glycerol subunit. And so you don't just want to cut them off and then re-add them, wasting ATP. Well, I mean, I might want to do that, but usually your body wants to conserve energy.